Hello friends, Vixdubergrin here, and today we are kicking off a week of State of the Investigator videos for the Drain Eaters expansion. We are looking at Tommy Muldoon, who serves as the expansion's guardian. Warning, theory crafting incoming. Usually when I make a video like this, I want to have experience playing the investigator, but in this case, I'm looking at their cards and kind of projecting forward how they're going to be. I give Tommy Muldoon stats a B. He is as generic as they come, 3 willpower, 3 intellect, 4 fight, and 2 agility, just like Roland Banks. However, he has an 8-6 mix of health and sanity pools. That, in my opinion, is better than Roland's 9 and 5. So, nothing fantastic, no big weaknesses here, unless you're facing a lot of agility tests and scenarios. I give his Elder Sign an A. You get plus 2. You can move up to 2 damage and or horror from Tommy Muldoon to an asset you control or vice versa. Plus 2 can pass some tests that you otherwise wouldn't, especially on the mythos side of things. Uh, the ability is a nice healing option, and you could kill off your own assets, which uh, play into his ability, as we're going to find out. So his ability uh, is a reaction. When an asset you control is defeated, gain X resources. X is the total amount of damage and horror on that asset. Shuffle that asset into your deck. So immediately this gives you a ton of extra resources which guardians need. Their cards are pretty expensive um, and they don't have a lot of resource generation uh, built into their class. You can play risky with soak out because if they die they can go back into your deck and you can get resources from them to maybe play more soak. It synergizes with the survival knife You'll want to take hits to use your ability. You could take uh, attacks of opportunity and actually benefit from that. And survival knife is a nice way of dealing damage uh, when that happens. Now, if you use this ability too much, it might not be as advantageous because you keep putting those soak cards into your deck. If you're trying to draw a weapon or some kind of answer, that's going to be a little bit harder if you keep using his ability. So you do have to consider that when you decide if you want to use that reaction or not. Um, the Guardian class doesn't have a ton of search other than um, Prepared for the Worst, which I think is a must run with Tommy. So is Tommy's ability a bonus or something to build a deck around? Is he more Zoe or Leo? I think he's more Leo than Zoe, but we'll find out when we start playing. By that, I mean Leo Anderson's ability is very proactive, and Zoe's is very reactive. His signature cards I give an A grade to. Let's take a look at his weakness, Rookie Mistake. You discard each asset you control with damage or horror on it. If no assets are discarded by this effect, shuffle Rookie Mistake back into your deck. So Rookie Mistake, like a lot of weaknesses these days, it's very situational. You're probably going to lose one asset from that. The worst thing that could happen is that you lose an ally with the good ability that you want out, like Beat Cop, um, stuff like that. It's going to get worse over time, too, as you... Um, purchase more expensive and better allies. But all in all, I don't think this is going to be too impactful. You'll probably lose a Soak card, maybe an ally, when this uh, turns up. And Becky is his signature weapon. It's a custom Marlin Model 1894. It costs two to play. It has a fight icon, an agility icon, and a wild icon. It's two-handed. It uses two ammo, which is pretty low. But each resource gain from Tommy Muldoon's reaction ability may instead be placed on Becky as ammo. And then it has a pretty standard plus two to fight, plus one damage. Um, standard to most big weapons that don't cost any experience points, like the uh, 45 Thompson or Jenny's uh, custom 45s. Um, yeah, Becky's really good in my opinion. So Becky, I think, works best with Bandolier. So you can play Becky. You can have another weapon to use when Becky doesn't have any ammo on it. And then you just reload Becky and use Becky when you want to. So have Becky out, have like the Enchanted Blade, the 45 automatic, maybe a Survival Knife, although that wouldn't be ideal. Um, and then when you uh, want to reload Becky, you can try to get one of your assets killed off and place that as ammo onto her. So a very good signature weapon. Now, it's not going to be very good if you just play it with no support, 
and then have it run out of ammo, then just stand there waiting. Um, especially if you don't have soak out, then um, it becomes really bad. So it really depends on when you put Becky out and how you support it. But I think it deserves an A grade. Tommy Muldoon's card pool, I give an A minus. So he gets to run Guardian cards level 0 to 5, Neutral cards level 0 to 5, and Survivor cards level 0 to 2. He's a mirrored version of William Yorick from Carcosa. Uh, the funny part about that is that Survivor cards level 0 to 2 is the grand majority of that card pool because Survivor cards only go up to level 3. We don't have any level 4 or level 5 survivor cards at this time. So even though that's technically Tommy's off class, he can use most of the survivor cards. Um, cutting card pool, of course, is fine, especially for Tommy, since he's probably going to be a fighter. You have some clue ring if you want to. Um, the only thing you're really missing is like drawing and searching options with, uh, with that particular card pool. Um, again, prepare for the worst in Survival Knife and Bandolier. I think are going to be all really good for Tommy Muldoon. The 45 Thompson, just because it's pretty affordable with Tommy, if he loses um, even like one or two allies, that's enough to fund a uh, 45 Thompson. One or two assets, that is. Uh, he has plenty of uh, level zero soak options. Leather Coat and Cherished Keepsake are pretty good. They cost nothing, and they're going to return two resources when they die. So that's really good. Um, True Grit and something worth fighting for. Tommy can really afford those, even though they cost three. Um, they refund three when they die. So that's really affordable. And True Grit and something worth fighting for. You can soak for your friends, which is nice. And it doesn't take up any card slots unlike the leather coat and the cherished keepsakes. So, all very good. And then a cute interaction, a chance encounter. You can take an ally asset from your uh, friend's discard pile, and then if you get it killed off, you're gonna use his ability to gain some resources and put that asset into your deck, which is kind of funny. I don't think it's uh, necessarily a good thing. You're gonna want a guardian ally out most of the time, so it's still kind of funny though. And then this is a sample deck list I came up with. This is definitely a multiplayer fighting focused uh, list. It has a lot of assets, but I think that's just going to be how Tommy Muldoon runs. Uh, you could definitely take out some of those and put in more events and skills, but a lot of soak in that list for sure. And then when you get to spend experience, Tommy really shines. Uh, agency backup is insane with him. Uh, you could potentially return 8 resources with it. It's something that can kill itself, so you can be more proactive with it. Uh, dealing free damage and gaining free clues is amazing. Uh, it does cost 7 and 5 experience to put out, but once it is out, uh, once it dies, you can really um, refund itself pretty easily. The Armor of Arden, I don't know if that's going to be more cute than good uh, with most investigators concerning Armor of Arden. Um, it does take up a body slot, so if you're going to run Bandolier, that's going to interfere with it. Probably not something to take, but it's something to think about. And then Brother Xavier, uh, a great health sanity soak. You get extra willpower. You can take other people's hits, and when it dies, it blows up to an enemy, so that's pretty good. And B-Cop level 2, really good card on its own. But in the uh, context of Tommy's ability, you can it can kill itself to give you a lot of resources, at least four, uh, or at least three, rather, and uh, plus one fighting, free damage. That's all good. And then in the realm of cute, you can make him a crazy cat guy with uh, Miss Doyle. I think all of Miss Doyle's uh, bonded assets, all of those cats are re really, really strong. And when Miss Doyle dies, you can just put her back into the deck and to maybe draw those um, one of those assets again. So I think that's really, really good. So Solo versus Multiplayer. Solo, he does have some help with Kluvering and not a terrible intellect stat. You have Scene of the Crime, Evidence, Alice uh, Luxley, maybe, um, Flashlight, of course, um, Liquid I Found, Lucky, that sort of thing. 
Uh, you could run Keen Eye if you wanted to. He could definitely fund that with his ability. So he wouldn't be terrible. And in multiplayer, of course, he settles into a fighter role, as most Guardians do. He can, uh, especially, he's especially good at soaking for the entire party. And I think because of the assets we were talking about, he really uh, ages well in a campaign. When he's got more XP and he's got more enemies to deal with, uh, he just gets better and better. So why play Tommy Muldoon? I think he's an interesting amalgamation of Mark Harrigan, Leo Anderson, and Zoe Samaras' design ideas. He wants to play Soak. He wants to get that Soak killed off and gain resources. Um, very, very interesting. Becky and the Elder Sign are both very good in my opinions. And unless you're playing agility heavy scenarios or he really needs to evade something, uh, he doesn't have any real glaring weaknesses. Anyway, this is our look at Tommy Muldoon. Next up, we're going to be looking at the Rogue with 5 Fighting, which is pretty exciting. I'm Big Stupid Grin. Hope you enjoyed your time here. And until next time, have a good one.